Oh gosh. Okay, so it's just about two o'clock, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everybody that's logged in. Um, today we've got our first webinar for Richland Gives, which is very exciting. Um, and we're going to be focusing on the basics of the giving event and donor en engagement. And the people that you've been hearing chat <laughs> are me. I'm Linda Gerhardt. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Um, and I'm here with Maura Tainer of the Richland County Foundation. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I would like to thank everybody for registering for Richland Gives and for, of course, attending the first webinar. This will be the fourth year for Richland Gives, and our Board of Trustees uh, feels that Richland Gives is very important, and that's why they've made a significant investment into the Day of Giving. This year, over $44,000 in grant prize incentives will be offered, including special ones during our uh, events on the Day of Giving. We will have the nonprofit showcase again at Ohio State University Mansfield over the lunch hour. And then that evening, we are going to have a leaderboard watch party down at IdeaWorks. If you remember last year, we enjoyed a 55 uh, degree sunny day, and I just don't feel like we'll luck out two years in a row. So that's why we moved the party from the Phoenix to IdeaWorks. Um, as you know, Richland gives the success of this day will depend on our collective enthusiasm and implementation. So we're asking nonprofit professionals and volunteers to bring all their skills to the table. The goals for Richland gives are to build capacity, grow philanthropy, and make our community stronger. This webinar is an important first step towards meeting those goals. To further assist you, we will have a workshop here on October 11th called Keys to Success. It will be held over the lunchtime, so if you're interested in that, all you have to do is call me or email me. And if you would like to register for the second webinar on October 24th, there is a link available at the Richland Gibbs website, richlandgibbs.org. Go to the Resources tab and the Nonprofit Toolkit. As you know, participation in these webinars will help make the day a big success for everyone. And I thank you for your attention today and through November 27th. Thank you, Maura. That was a lot of information. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you. This is my second year um, as the project manager for Richland Gives on the Mighty Cause side. Um, and my role um, has always been to make sure that the technology end of things is designed and working well for the event. Um, and I'm also as a resource here is a resource for everybody participating in the event. So if you need any help with fundraising strategy, if you need help with your page, I'm here in that capacity as well. I can help you get your campaign ready and make sure that you're good to go for the big day. Um, and you can see my email address right there. It's lynda at mightycause.com. Our support staff is also available to you. That's support at mightycause.com. Um, and Richland Gives is always just such a great event with so many live components that make it really exciting and fun. Um, so I'm just really excited to see what everybody accomplishes this year. And thank you for all of your help, Linda. You've been a tremendous resource for not only me, but for every nonprofit. And we appreciate your attention and hard work. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm always happy to, to be part of this event. Um, everybody is so nice and so polite. And it's just such a refreshing event because it's such a positive, happy day. There's not that much cutthroat competition. So it's always a pleasure working with uh, the Richland County Foundation and all of the participating nonprofits. All right, so um, just in case you are on the webinar and you're new to Richland Gives or missed some of the emails that were sent out by Mighty Cause in April, I just wanted to do a little bit of um, recap. Um, Razu changed our name to Mighty Cause in April. So even though we've only been Mighty Cause for just a few months, the company has been around as Razu and serving nonprofits since, since 2006. And as Maura mentioned, we've been the platform for Richland Gives since 2015. Um, and since our inception in 2006 as a platform, we've 
helped nonprofits raise over $600 million and served over 30,000 nonprofits. Um, we're the market innovator of giving events and we're also a full service nonprofit software provider. And we're recently rated as top nonprofit software by Gartner Research and Captera, which is pretty cool. Um, so giving days is kind of what we've done since the beginning. It's something that we love at Mighty Cause. And um, our platform, our technology is really solid because we've had or over a decade to perfect our giving day technology. And just as a little bit of housekeeping um, before we dive into the presentation, I'm gonna be taking questions with Maura at the end of the presentation. So if you think of a question during the presentation, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel and we'll make sure to get to it at the end of the webinar. So as I'm sure you all know, Richland Gives is November 27th, and it's hosted by the Richland County Foundation. Mighty Cause is the platform for Richland Gives, and it's a 12-hour online giving marathon. Um, the Richland County Foundation started Richland Gives, as Maura mentioned, to help nonprofits grow and build capacity and strengthen the community. And with all of that housekeeping out of the way, um, we'll just dive right in. Um, the first step to participate in Richland Gives is to register your nonprofit. Um, you just go to richlandgives.org or richlandgives.com, click the button that says register and fill out a short form. You'll hear from us in 24 to 48 hours, um, and it's usually closer to 24 hours, so we do uh, try to respond to you as quickly as possible. The deadline to register is Halloween, October 31st, um, and once you're registered, you can add anyone else at your nonprofit who will need access to your page as administrator in the settings section of your dashboard. And this is important because you'll need to add other users as admins if they'll need to be able to edit your page, view donor information, disbursement reports, and are just generally helping with your campaign. But we'll go into how to do that in just a few slides. After you've registered and been approved, we recommend taking some time to get comfortable with navigating Mighty Cause, even for those of you who've participated in previous years, because we've made some pretty significant changes to the look and navigation of the platform. It's designed to be more intuitive than it was, so if you got used to finding things in a certain place, it's easy to find them, but it's important to note that they may have moved, so you should take some time and really get comfortable with your new dashboard. Now, when you log in, um, you'll be taken to a home screen that will give you a snapshot of your key metrics from the last few weeks. Your profile is what we used to call your organization page. Um, and most of you, this is the main page you'll be using for Richland Gives. Um, you can access your donation report, disbursements, and now we even have a cool new feature that allows you to customize the checkout experience for donors, um, which is called the Donor Experience Tool. Another awesome feature this year is the campaign screen, which is something that people have been asking us for for a very long time. And what that does is it pulls together all the different pages you have on the Mighty Cause platform, whether they're peer-to-peer -peer pages, project pages that you've started, or teams, and it just puts them in one central place so that you can access and view and manage those pages from the campaign screen. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> And you'll also find your settings on your dashboard, which is where you can manage things like EFT, which is our direct deposit option, legal information like your address, and more things like that. Um, one thing that has changed is that all of the settings directly related to your page, how your organization profile looks and functions, are now found under page settings. So we've separated them out from your general nonprofit settings on Mighty Cause. So the way to think about this is that if you want to set something for your page itself, you'll find that under profile and then page settings. And if you want to manage something for your nonprofit, which is something that goes into any peer-to-peer -peer pages and basically is a change that takes place across the entire platform, like your address, you would do that under your general settings. Um, so again, just take some time and get used to this new dashboard. It's very intuitive, um, but if you got used to looking at the old Mighty Cause site, which was the old Razoo site, you may notice that things are in a little bit of a different place this year. Next, you'll want to start customizing your profile, or if you're a Richland Gives veteran, just update it for 2018. Um, you can customize the look and feel of the page to make it reflect your nonprofit's brand, add your logo and a banner image, and tell your story. Um, your story is really the centerpiece of your campaign, so make sure your story is current and updated for the new year, and we'll be talking a little bit more about what goes into a strong story in the next few slides. 
An important part of updating your page is updating your theme, which is basically just how your page looks. Um, so update a lo upda upload a logo, which needs to be a one-to-one -one ratio or basically just a square, and upload a background image to add visual interest to your page and just sort of add an additional storytelling, visual storytelling component to your page. You can add a filter or ramp it up to ramp up the tone tones in your picture, in your background, or you can even get rid of it or tone it down. Um, and as a note, Mighty Cause is mobile responsive, which means that how this banner looks changes from desktop to mobile and so on because it set it it is it looks at what you're viewing the site on and adjusts so that it looks good on all screens. Um, so for that reason, it's important not to post background images that have text overlays um, because some of that text might be cropped out on mobile um, devices or on tablets. So that's just important to remember. Um, most of us are usually working from a desktop when we're editing our page, but on Mighty Cause, most people do make most of their donations from mobile devices. So you want to just be cognizant of the fact that um, this is going to adjust to look different on different screens. So text overlays and background images that have lots of text tend not to translate very well and you want it to look good on all devices. Um, you can also set a theme color. So if you have a color for your brand, um, some colors that are in your logo, you can change um, that setting in your theme settings um, to have that reflected on your page. It'll change some of the text and the donate button to match your brand and your logo. Also on your profile is your story, which is again, the centerpiece of your campaign and really your space to tell your story and talk about your nonprofit, what you do in the world and your campaign and get people emotionally invested in your work. We have a simple inline text editor that makes it easy for you to make your story look really jazzy and add formatting like headers and lists and so on to help make your story more interesting to read because most of us don't wanna read a wall of text, so we need that broken up with some images, some headers, some lists, and some videos. And on that note, you can also add images and video to help you tell your story. Um, images can be uploaded directly into the Mighty Cause platform, but videos have to be uploaded to YouTube or Vimeo before you can embed them. And both of those services offer free accounts, um, so you don't need to purchase anything, you just need to go to YouTube or Vimeo and um, upload the video there and then you can embed it onto your story. Another cool thing you can add to your story is a custom tab. So for instance, if you were having an in-person event or you wanted to offer some more information about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for Richland Gives or just wanted to add some supplementary inf information about what your nonprofit does, you can actually add a tab um, that people are able to toggle to to see that information but it's not front and center on your page. So you're making it available but you're putting it in the background and giving people the choice to view it if they want. So it's a great place to add more information for like peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers or anything that you're doing in person on the day of. On your profile, you'll also want to add and integrate your social media accounts. Um, you can upload images into a media gallery, connect your Instagram account, um, which feeds right into your Mighty Cause page, connect a Facebook gallery, and optimize your social sharing settings. Um, this all gives people additional information about your work and helps your page feel more robust and vibrant. Um, some of the things you can do with social settings are um, adding a custom image. So when people share your profile page on social media, you can customize that image. So it is formatted for Facebook. Um, you can have tweets automatically tag you or use the Richling Gifts hashtag. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with your social media sharing settings. So make sure to take the time to look at that and make sure that you customize it to the extent that you can. So donations and disbursements are a really important part of preparing for an event like Richland Gives, and I just wanted to take a few mo moments to talk through where all of this information is on Mighty Cause. Um, you'll receive an email notification when a new dom donation is made if you're an admin, but you'll really want to utilize your donation report to track donations. Um, under the donation section, you can view and export a report with all of your donor, donor data. And keep in mind that the view on the actual page is somewhat limited by the space we have available. But when you export the spreadsheet, you get a lot more information about that donation. And the reason that that's important to look at your donations report is if you miss an email or something like that happens, um, it's just not as reliable as actually just 
pulling the report from your Mighty Cause page and getting that donation report so that you can do your accounting. Um, I've seen people try to do it through emails and that's just not very time efficient. So um, you have that report there. So it's always the, it's good to know exactly where that is so that if you have a question, you can easily access the donation information. Disbursements are twice monthly if you have EFT set up on the 10th and the 25th of the month. And if you get checks, um, we'll send it around the 10th of each month. Um, we recommend setting up EFT um, so you can start getting the disbursements sooner. Um, we don't hold them until after the event. So for instance, when you start collecting donations on November 1st, you can actually get some of that money sent to you before the event if you have EFT set up. Um, once you get your disbursement, you'll be able to access a report that for that disbursement under the disbursement section in your dashboard so that you can see everything that's included in that disbursement. So when you're reconciling after the event and you're trying to account for all of the donations you received, if you have any questions about the amount that's in your disbursement, it's always a good idea to use your disbursement report and your donations report to sort of do the math and make sure that those makes sense because sometimes things like refunds, even though we try not to offer them, sometimes people make honest mistakes and those will be reflected in your disbursement report. You can also add offline gifts in your donation section so your totals reflect all of your fundraising efforts. And you can see where the button is located here on the slide. Um, if you want to count offline gifts, you'll just need to be sure that you have opted into counting them in your page totals, which is in your page settings. And one thing I wanna make a note of because it's very important is that for Richland Gives, only online donations count toward prizes. So you can add them to your page, but they won't affect your position on the leaderboard or help you win golden tickets. Um, and it's really more of a display tool. And for that reason, we recommend encouraging your donors to give online for as much as possible for Richland Gives if they're able to. So you have some pretty cool tools you can use to make sure that you've optimized the checkout process for your donors and you're getting the information you want from them. The donor experience options are located under donations in your dashboard. And on this screen, you can choose what data to collect, add custom donation suggestions that tie a dollar amount into a real world item or service that helps your nonprofit provide, and preview the whole checkout process so you can ensure that it functions the way you want it to for donors because sometimes you'll pick and choose and say, oh, I wanna collect this, this, and this, but then when you actually go through that whole process yourself, you realize, whoa, this is a crazy process and it takes a long time, so I need to make it shorter. So we definitely recommend actually taking the time to go through your own donation process and make sure that it's simple and easy for donors. Um, we've also added a thank you page this year where you can add a video and a custom message and also add a call to action button to direct donors somewhere else after they're done making their donation. You can send them to your website, you can send them to your Mighty Cause page again, you can do whatever you'd like with that, but that's a new option this year. Um, and one other thing I wanted to um, mention about donor experience is that you do also have the ability to set, um, to opt into dedications and designations. Um, so that's really important to a lot of nonprofits. So definitely if you have a specific fund that you're raising money for, or you want the ability to have donors to have the ability to add a dedication to their donation, you can add that into the checkout process. Um, so make sure you opt into that if that's something that you would like to do. Also in donations are matching grants, and a matching grant is basically a large donation that your nonprofit profit leverages to entice people to donate. So it brings in other donations um, by offering it as a match. So for instance, if you have a $1,000 donation from a major gift donor or a board member, you can offer that up as a match and say that any donations during Richland Gives will be matched one-to-one -one up to $1,000. Um, you can also do this during a specific period of time if you'd like to do that and really create some urgency and drive traffic. Um, and you can add your matching grant to display on your page using the matching grants tool. You do not need to have the match fulfilled online, though it certainly can be fulfilled online by your, by your grantor if they want to use that money to also help you win uh, leaderboard prizes. But if you have a grantor paying by check, you'll want to make sure that you count the match in your totals automatically. So that means that if someone donates $25 and you have a one-to-one -one match going live, you'll add $50 to your total when somebody makes that $25 donation to reflect the match so that you don't have to go in separately and enter the grant as an offline donation. We'll do it automatically for you. The only thing I wanna mention 
is that if you do have a grantor who's fulfilling a match online, make sure you click that little box in the screenshot um, that says don't include grant value in organization metrics, because what that does is it basically um, adds it as an offline donation as a match to each donation. So we don't want it to be counted twice. So you'll just wanna get a feel for where the donor would like to fulfill the match so that you don't end up counting it in your metrics and then having it um, made fulfilled online, which leads to it being counted twice. And lastly, I wanted to go over your settings. Um, on your dashboard, when you click settings, this is where you can add and remove admins, which is very important. It used to be on Razu that you had to contact us if you wanted to add an admin on Mighty Cause. That is no longer the case. You can just click the blue button that says add a new admin and just add anybody at your organization, any volunteers who are helping you with your campaign as admins so that they have full access to your page. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can also update your legal address, up, set up EFT, and customize your URL and social media sharing options from your settings. So now that we've gone over some of the basics of using the Mighty Cause platform, we'll move on to campaign strategy and how to engage donors, which is always very important on a giving day. The Richland County Foundation has provided a toolkit for nonprofits, which you can easily access on the Richland gift site. So we recommend checking this out and making full use of this nonprofit toolkit. It has a lot of great information. Um, you can sign up for some of the trainings that Maura had mentioned, the second webinar, which is in October, access tips and how to's and templates for social media and emails and more. And you can also find the Richland Gives logo if you wanted to add that to your own communications for the event. So this is a great resource. So make sure that you go there, make use of all of the tools that are available there and uh, download some of the forms so that you can get started planning. You can start accepting donations for Richland Gives on November 1st, so take advantage of early donations and get a head start on the competition. Um, you can view the donations on your donations report. Um, and just as a note, these are not pledges. We used to use the terminology secured pledges, but these are processed immediately. And they just basically count towards your Richland Gives totals. So after November 1st, all donations will count towards your totals. And you'll want to make that clear to donors that it's not a secured pledge. It's not going to process on November 27th. It processes as a normal donation when they make the donation. So they will be charged immediately. Um, donors don't need an account to make a donation so they can easily donate to your organization on their own timetable. And this can help you build momentum for your campaign. As we talked about a few slides ago, matching grants are a great way to engage donors on a giving day. And a big key to using a matching grant successfully is just promoting it. Um, in terms of who to ask for a matching grant, um, now is a great time. You have plenty of time to nail down a matching grant and get one secured for Richland Gives. Um, and your board is a really great place to start. Um, instead of passing the hat around at the end of the year to make their yearly donations, um, they could provide a grant for Richland Gives and allow you to offer it up as a matching grant, which helps make their donation go further. You can also reach out to corporate sponsors or community sponsor partners for a grant, and major gift donors may be willing to provide a grant. It's a good stewardship tool that helps you nurture that relationship with your bigger, biggest supporters. It gives them a new and interesting way to support your work. And to promote it, you should add it to your page, as we discussed. Um, one thing that's especially important for many grantors is being recognized, especially if you've gotten a grant from a business. Um, publicly recognizing and thanking the donor, tagging them in social media posts and so on, is a good bit of PR for them and adds interest. It can also help you expand your reach on social media. Um, so creating urgency is important. Make sure your donors know the grant is only available for a limited time. And this is important because matching grants basically act like a buy one, get one or a BOGO sale um, with the grant giving donors the opportunity to make their money go a little bit further. Um, so promote it on social media, post updates on social media if the grant's almost fulfilled and make it part of your emails for the day as well. And you'll see the benefit to posting it on your Mighty Cause page is that you get that little badge that displays on your donate button. And one more thing to note about matching grants is that if you apply it to your organization profile, the matching grant will also be applied to any pages connected to your organization, like peer-to-peer -peer pages. Um, 
fundraisers can also have their own matching grants. But if you enter a matching grant on a fundraiser page instead of your main organization page, then it would only apply to that page. But once it's applied to your organization profile, it applies to all fundraisers that are connected to your organization. One great way to boost your campaign and reach more people through Richland Gives is to activate ambassadors who are engaged supporters who start who can start fundraising for you. Um, this can help you reach new people, raise more money, and engage your biggest supporters in a very meaningful way. Um, you can ask people to fundraise for you on social media, in emails, and it's a really great way for you to go beyond your existing donor base and have new people hear about your work. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is all about people telling their own story about their connection to your work and why they support it, which has a great testimonial effect and helps build grassroots support through their social networks. Ambassadors are important because peer-to-peer -peer fundraising essentially puts more boots on the ground on a day for you where you have a limited amount of time to reach people and get donations. They can also help you with reaching new supporters. You may not have permission to solicit somebody's aunt to make a donation, but the person whose aunt it is certainly has that ability. They can ask them to donate to your work. So it opens up networks of people for your nonprofit and brings them into the fold. Um, you get people telling personal stories, and that helps people feel confident in donating to your nonprofit because someone they know and trust is telling them what an impact your work has had on them. Um, think of it as traditional outreach on steroids, basically. Um, ultimately, adding peer-to-peer -to, -peer to your Richland Gifts campaign will just help you raise more money help you win prizes. So it's definitely something you'll want to consider adding because it's a great way to engage new donors, but also to take the support of your existing donors and people who support you time after time and take it up a level and have them act as ambassadors. Um, so especially if you've participated in Richland Gifts before, um, using peer-to-peer -peer and having ambassadors can be a really great way to shake things up and generate excitement for your campaign so that it doesn't get stale after people have competed uh, or watched donated to your campaign year after year. We also recommend having a focus on retaining donors if you're a Richland Gives, Gives veteran. Um, the nonprofit sector in general has a big problem with donor retention. Less than 50% of donors are retained on average from year to year. Um, so it's important to reach out specifically to donors um, who've given to previous Richland Gives campaigns for you. Um, these people are basically low hanging fruit because they've already shown up to support you. So it's a huge mistake to ignore them in 2018 or not make a specific appeal to have them come back. Um, you can download a list of your pre previous Richland Gives donors in your donation report. And with these donors, you'll not only want to entreat them to come back in 2018, you'll want to encourage them to give more. So bumping up the amount that they give slightly. If somebody gave it the $25 level last year, see if they'll go up to 50 or 40 this year, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, Depending on how many years you've been doing Richland Gives, you can even plan outreach to lapsed donors to capture them this year, or recapture them, I should say. And that means pulling report of donors who gave in 2016, but not in 2017, and sending them emails or doing some personal outreach to let them know about your campaign and why you hope that they'll come back to support you. Um, one thing we recommend doing after Richland Gives is over is tracking your donor retention for Richland Gives. Um, when you pull your report, see how many donors from 2017 came back to give in 2018. And you can either see that you've done it successfully and you've reached out to your previous year's donors, or you can make it a goal for next year to engage a little better with those donors. And finally, you'll want to spread the word about your campaign. Um, use all of your available channels like social media, your website, your newsletter, any events, signs in your lobby, put it in your email signature, and so on. Um, we recommend uh, for email especially segmenting your donor groups to talk to them more specifically. So basically what that means is instead of blasting all of your emails out to one list of people, taking a look at that list and splitting them up into groups, like people who are recurring donors, people who are also volunteers, um, people who are on your board, people who have given once, or maybe people who've just used your services, and just talking to them 
specifically referencing their relationship with your nonprofit um, and talking to them as individuals because people are more likely to take action when they're being spoken to personally. So segmentation for emails is an easy way to see greater returns on your efforts. Um, plan and schedule your communications in advance and make use of the info and templates available in the toolkit to help you do that. Um, a best practice is to have a clear CTA like donate or give now with a link to your page so that everybody knows what to do and where to go to make their donation. And this is really important because sometimes nonprofits will spend forever putting together a really great email, but then where they fail is the CTA. They'll use really soft language like please support us. Um, and that tends to not work as well as really direct, clear calls to action like give now, donate today, and so on. All right, so that's it for the presentation. Um, I'd like to open it up uh, to any questions you might have. So if you have a question, um, just type it into the questions box of your GoToWebinar panel, and Maura and I will take a stab at answering it. All right, so how do you set a how do you set your total back to zero if for from last year? This is a good question. So you basically are going to do this in your page settings. So on your dashboard, um, go to uh, Profile, then click Page Settings, and there is a tool in there or a section in there called Metrics Calculation, and you'll just want to reset that to November 1st, 2018. Um, so you're resetting it for a date in the future, but that's when donations open up. So what that does is it gets rid of all of those old donations, and it will only count donations made after, on or after November 1st, um, so that you are you know, current for this year and your page is updated and you're not showing any old donations on the counter on your page. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> so let's see what else we've got again. Okay, so if I don't have email <clears throat> emails, how do I get the word out to fundraise? Um, I think this is a situation where it would be a really great idea to talk to your board or people who are in your nonprofit's inner circle and have them be ambassadors for you and get peer-to-peer -peer going. Um, because if you don't have their emails, it's really tough to, to market to them specifically because email is such a powerful tool. So getting some peer-to-peer -peer going for Richland Gives could be a great way to get some new emails, get new donors and make people aware of your work and what you're doing. And again, it's coming from people who are ambassadors for your organization. They know your work well and they're able to talk about what you do. So that's a great way to get their emails and to get them to make that donation. Um, some other things you could try, it kind of depends on where your nonprofit um, how you operate, if you have a lobby, for instance, that gets a lot of foot traffic, um, you could have a sign-in sheet, a sign-up sheet there where people can sign up for your e-newsletter. Um, you can make flyers. Um, if you are in a prime location, um, geographically, you can consider some yard signs. Um, but really, I would say make use of the people who are already invested in your nonprofit and see if they can help you with um, connecting to other people's social networks so that you can uh, make people aware that you're participating in the event and get them to um, make a donation. And Maura, feel free to jump in if you have any suggestions for them, um, but they're basically asking, if I don't have any email addresses, how do I get the word out? Um, well, I just sent you a question. Um, I think a good way to do that is to utilize the fundraising page under your nonprofit page. So for example, at the foundation, uh, we have people in the Women's Fund and also in the Connections Fund who like to set up fundraising pages under our nonprofit. And then they share that page peer to peer to try to generate money for their special focus fund. So that is one way. And what Linda already indicated about collecting emails at various events and from various staff members, board members, and volunteers, I think is a good idea. And if you did participate in Richland Gives any of the previous years, under your donation report, as Linda explained a little bit earlier, you would have email addresses under your donation reports. 
Yeah, and absolutely. Just to clarify how peer-to-peer -peer fundraising works, I'm, I'm sorry if I was being a little in, inside baseball, but I talk about fundraising and peer-to-peer -peer every day, so sometimes I forget. Just to roll that back, um, a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is where somebody who supports your organization, like a board member or a volunteer, um, creates their own page on Mighty Cause. They just go to your organization profile and they click fundraise um, and they create their own page from there where they reach out to their social network. Um, so you're not responsible for this page aside from maybe saying, hey, I would be really happy if you'd fundraise for me. Um, they are responsible for getting the word out and it kind of gives you access to audiences that you otherwise are not able to like email or market to in any way. So that can be a really powerful way to sort of increase the, the size of your donor base and to reach new people during Richland Gives is looking at who your volunteers are. If you have like a super engaged volunteer um, approaching your, your board of directors um, and saying if one of them would be willing to set up a peer-to-peer -peer page, even creating like a board member challenge. I've seen nonprofits do that um, for giving days is they basically pit their, their board of directors against each other and say, who can raise the most for our nonprofit, which is, it's fun for them. And a lot of board members are extremely well connected. Um, so it can be a really great way to get more um, people talking about your nonprofit and to reach new people. So um, if you have any questions specifically about how peer-to-peer -peer fundraising works, I'm happy to be a resource to you. If you'd like to email me, you can also email support. Um, but that can be the sort of the solution if you're small and you don't have email lists. Um, but again, as Maura mentioned, if you have participated previously, you do have a lot of emails to work from. You just need to download them in your donations report. All right, so there's a question about whether this is being recorded. Um, yes, it's being recorded, so we'll I'll make sure that you guys all have access to the actual recording. It'll be posted on the uh, nonprofit toolkit on the site, and then I'll also make sure that Maura has the slides if you want to. Um, I, I can also email, we'll, we'll connect about that offline, but we'll make sure that you have access to the recording and the slides. Okay, so clarifying um, the ma the matching grant box. This is a good question. Um, so it's a little bit tricky because matching grants are really one of the more complex tools we have on the platform. Um, Mighty Cause used to make you add in a matching grant after it was fulfilled as an offline donation. So um, what we've done is we've automated that for you. So when I talk about adding it to your metrics, basically instead of having to go back in, and add in your $1,000 matching grant as an offline donation. If you know you're getting that via check, um, you can just add it, auto it'll automatically add that amount to your metrics, the count that's on your page, so that when somebody donates $25 and you have a one-to-one -one match, instead of having $25 added to your total, the $50 with the match will appear in your total on your page. Um, now, it's important to clarify that if your match is offline, it will not display that way in the leaderboard. So that can be a source of a discrepancy if you have an offline matching grant and you're adding it to your totals and you look at the leaderboard and you go, hey, this is a different amount. Usually the reason for that is offline donations and matching grants. Um, but basically the rule of thumb, because this is a little complicated, um, we have a support article that walks you through all of this if you go to um, support in our footer on Mighty Cause. Um, it, you basically, if it's an offline donation, you want to add it to your metrics. If you have the grantor making the donation online, then click that box that says don't add it to your metrics because you don't want to count it twice. So I hope that makes sense. Maura, am I, am I making sense? <laughs> Uh, it is a little complicated, and I already sent somebody that article about matching grants. What it basically does is entices the donors to give for a one-to-one -one ultimate goal and total for the nonprofit. However, for example, if you had a $2,000 matching grant that your board of trustees is giving for Richland Gifts, and that is given to you via a check. That is considered an offline donation. It does not count towards your totals for the day. 
Now, say your board wanted it to count towards the totals, I suppose um, a solution to that is somebody would make that donation via a credit card on your page after November 1st, and that way it would go towards your totals. Uh, so it is up to you and your donor about how they want to give a matching grant, whether it's a check or whether it's actually an actual credit card transaction. If it's a credit card transaction on your page after November 1st, it would count towards your total, correct, Linda? Yes, um, and basically I think the question was more about the that little box that you can click about metrics, um, and the metrics are the counts that you have on your page. So when you log into your page or you go to your page, you see, oh, we've raised $50,000 from 300 donors. Um, those are what we consider your metrics. So if somebody makes a donation online, because it's made online, it's going to be counted there. If it's a cash or a check, donation, you have to tell us that somebody gave it to you and you would have to add it in manually because we have no idea that you've gotten that donation because it doesn't happen on our platform. So the basic rule of thumb is if you have a matching grant, and I definitely recommend a matching grant because it's uh, you know such a great tool on a giving day, is if it's a cash or check donation that the grantor is providing, um, include it in your metrics. That's the default on Mighty Cause. If it's a credit card donation and they're going to make it through the platform, just make sure you click that box that says don't include it in my metrics because we don't want it to be counted twice. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a kind of net matching grants in a nutshell. And Maura has a, a great support article that I wrote that kind of breaks down how all of this works. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the scoop on matching grants. And if you are still lost and again this is a confusing um topic because it's like when we were creating this new tool we were going crazy because there's so many different pieces of logic involved um you feel free to email me feel free to email support and we'll make sure that you are 100 percent on you know how to enter your grants um on mighty cause for richland gives you have plenty of time so we can talk through it and make sure that you you're set and you know everything you need to know all right, so um, a couple of questions about the security of the platform, um, one related to um, donors re remaining anonymous. Um, this is another good question um, it, because it's important to know that there are no true anonymous donations on Mighty Cause, which is to say that the nonprofit is able to see who you are and what your email address is. So if you have a donor who wants to be completely anonymous, they don't even want the nonprofit to know who they are, then they, this is probably not the best way because we don't do true do not anonymous donations because everything is linked to their email address. Um, however, donors do have the option of marking themselves as publicly hidden, which means that their name will not display anywhere that's viewable to the public. Um, they you know, won't display uh, you know, with their donation in the in the feed, it won't display anywhere where somebody who's not a nonprofit admin for your organization and not an employee of Mighty Cause um, can see. So that is how uh, quote unquote anonymous donations work. They're not truly anonymous because the nonprofit knows who you are. We have to issue a tax receipt to you as well. So we do have your name and email. Um, and the nonprofit has your name and email, but the donation can be hidden from the public view. There's just a box when they're checking out that allows them to note that they would like to have their name publicly hidden. They can also hide the amount. Um, so if they want to do both, if they want an anonymous donation, it, it appears as anonymous on the public side of Mighty Cause, um, they can do that. And then they can also opt to not show the amount. So if I'm donating and I, don't want everybody to know that I donated $500 for whatever reason, I can also hide the amount of my donation. Um, and the other question um, and follow up to that is safeguards in place from my, from, to keep the platform from being hacked, since it may include a lot of personal account information, um, which is also a good question. Um, Mighty Cause is a, a secure platform. We are PCI compliant. Um, and I'm happy to provide a copy of that certificate certificate if you'd like to see it. Um, so that basically means that we follow 
the best practices and protocols in place for technology companies. It's a secure platform. Um, nobody's credit card information is being compromised. Um, we on the Mighty Cause end can't even see the full card number. We can see the last four digits and some details about the transaction, but we can't get your card information at Mighty Cause, even as employees who are able to go into the back end of the site. It's all done through a secure third party processor called called authorize.net um, and then we have fraud protection in place as well that will protect people who are using their credit cards from any abuse and it will flag any suspicious transactions for us so we have a lot of safeguards in place um, we're following all of the best practices and we've been around since 2006 and we've never had a hack or anything that compromised information of donors on mighty cause um, so we're very secure I'm happy to provide a PCI certificate to anybody who would like to view it, but there's really no risk to your donors putting their credit card information online. Obviously, it's great that people are cautious about that. Um, one thing to look for um, is a, a, the security symbol on your browser. So donors will be actually be able to see, because they come to our site, they'll usually see a lock, a little green lock, on their browser that knows that that shows them that anything that happens on the the platform is secure in terms of their credit card information. So um, really, it's more important to be cautious of sites that do not have that HTTPS. Um, HTTP without the S is not secure. Um, we're a secure platform. We do take security very seriously, and we've never had any incidents where card information was compromised on our platform. All right, so just moving on. Um, uh, Mara, this might be a good one for you. Um, it says, is the Richland Young Professionals Group going to be assisting with page setups? And I don't know the answer to that. So Mara, does that ring any bells for you? Um, I did send out an email in conjunction with Angie Cerrone of the Richland Young Professionals. And that was sent out about a week ago. They have not had anyone step up to volunteer. So I sent an email yesterday to members of the Connections Fund, and I've had two people step up to volunteer to help nonprofits. I also have two other people helping me this year with marketing and some other things, Zach Motter and Mike Koheiser. So I have a total of four volunteers and 16 nonprofits that have indicated they need help. So I will continue to try to find volunteers to help nonprofits set up their pages and also do their um, marketing and social media posts. But so far, I have four volunteers. Cool. I hope that answers the question. It's great that you guys are getting that kind of assistance. That's definitely an awesome benefit. Um, so moving on, there's a question about approaching businesses for matching grants. Like, what is the best way to do it? Um, would you send an email? Would you make a phone call? Would you try to set up an appointment? Um, the answer to that is yes. I, I would try to set up all three. It obviously depends on your organization's relationship with that business. Um, for instance, if you have a business that you have a pre-existing corporate sponsorship type of relationship with or has supported you publicly in the past, um, it may just be worth like giving them a phone call and saying, hey, this is what we're doing for Richland Gives. Um, do you want to get involved? Um, if it's somebody that you've never really worked with before or rather a business that you've never worked with before, an email can be a great conversation starter um, if, you know, rather than cold calling them or showing up um, because that can sort of, it depends on the business, but some people don't like that. So, you know, it always helps to start small and work your way up, um, but it kind of depends on your relationship. Um, I would say basically the way you want to approach um, matching grant partnerships and business partnerships is very similar to how you would approach major gift donors, which is that you would prospect, make a list of any potential businesses in the community that make sense for you to partner with. Like if you're an animal rescue, a local natural pet food store might be a natural partner for you. Um, so that would be prospecting. And during that um, process, you'd wanna make sure that you have good contact information. Um, like sending a general email to like info is maybe not the best approach if you can get a specific person who deals with, you know, either the public or partnerships within the organization, that's always better. 
um, rather than just sending a cold email to like a, a generic email address. Um, and then from there, you would um, you'd want to do some research, find out more about their business and, and whether or not they've you know, helped nonprofits in the past. And then you would ask them um, that how you ask is really dependent on you. Sometimes a phone call is great. Sometimes an email is great. Um, if it's somebody that um, I would say probably calling or emailing to set up an email or an appointment, like a, a lunch date, a, you know, coffee um, or a meeting at your office is the ultimate goal because when you're able to meet in person and talk to them about your your work and what you want to do for Richland Gives, you can seal that deal with a handshake and sort of make that personal connection because you don't prospect or steward businesses, you prospect and steward people. So you're really trying to make personal connections with the people at a business because they are the ones who are going to make the, the business partnership part happen for you. So I would say it depends. Um, I would also recommend highly um, if you are a larger nonprofit and you've maybe got some development coordinators, um, when you are talking to a business or a prospect for a matching grant, make sure that one person manages that relationship so that they're not getting passed around from person to person and that person really gets to know the, the individual that they're dealing with at the business because it can be kind of jarring and unpleasant for people to feel like they're being passed around from employee to employee. Um, so I hope that helps. We do have a um, we have some blog posts on blog.mightycause.com about uh, corporate partnerships. Um, so you can always check those out if you just do a search for corporate partnerships. We have some information about that available to you. All right, we've got so many questions. We've got like about four more. Um, so we'll try to get through those. Um, are there reports from previous campaigns that new participants can access for research and strategy purposes? Um, so Mora at the Richland County Foundation has some um, information about the general day and the traffic to the page. Um, in terms of like case studies, um, I'm not sure if we have any at Mighty Cause, um, but you know, uh, Mora, if you have any, you know, campaigns that stood out to you as being really awesome, maybe you can share that with the, the group of registrants this year so they can see what successful campaigns look like. Um, so I'm not sure if we have anything specifically, um, but you can also always sort of peruse um, Mighty Cause to see what campaigns are successful, what their pages look like, and that applies to Richland Gives as well. So you can go to the search and you can see see what other people are doing and what they have done on the platform. Um, obviously, we, we, the information is secure, but you can certainly take a look at their pages and scope out what, what the competition, for lack of a better word, has been up to. And All right, we so, also... Go ahead. Sorry. sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, go that ahead. Workshop, the workshop on October 11th will feature Fred Bull, who's from Little Buckeye Children's Museum who has done successful campaigns over the past couple years. And then the other thing is, uh, like in Linda indicated, um, you know, look at other giving days and what they have done on their website. Um, one in particular that I like is Park City, Utah. So if you look at their giving page and what a lot of their nonprofits do, um, they make it a fun day as well. They do. Park City has been doing their Giving Day Live PC, Give PC for a very long time, and they are a well-oiled machine. Their nonprofits are so on the ball, um, you know, just because they've been doing it for so long. And the training that the Park City Foundation provides is so comprehensive that they have really great pages. That's at livepcgivepc.com. Um, so you can sort of take a look at what those um, – what those organizations are doing, in addition to sort of looking at what people are doing for Richland Gives, but Live PC, Give PC, is they always do a really great job of telling their stories and making their pages look awesome. So that, yeah, that's definitely a, one to, to check out. Um, and there's a question here for Mora. Um, just so I want to try to wrap things up at three o'clock so we don't go too far over. Um, but it's, this one says, Maura, can you talk a bit more about the 40K in additional gifts? We're new to Richland Gives this year, so I'm curious as to how this is awarded and where um, the leaderboards or what were the leaderboards in the past. So basically, um, 
what are the prizes? I don't think there has been a prize announcement yet, um, but how it compares to past Richland Gives and sort of a breakdown of how the prizes will work this year. Okay. Um, on richlandgives.org, there is a tab called Rules and Prizes, and they are all outlined there. We did make some slight adjustments this year to the prizes. The total pot of money available is still the same. We just, um, on the leaderboard, we took up the prizes just a little bit. And um, we also are going to give prizes out like we did last year during the live events. That includes the nonprofit showcase at Ohio State and during the leaderboard watch party. So that $44,000 worth of um, prize money, if you will, we call it grants because we have to, um, it's, it's uh, outlined under rules and prizes. The only thing I have not added to that section is what will be given during the live events, and I hope to update that within the next couple of days. The other thing I would like to uh, point out uh, for the person who is new to Richland Gives or whoever is new to Richland Gives, under that nonprofit toolkit, there are um, templates for most of these things and including a checklist for success and also like a timeline for what you should be doing when. So um, that's a good way to start your planning. And also if you can, if you need volunteers to help start them getting engaged to help you to get your message out. Cool, that was a great thorough answer. And I apologize, you guys are so far ahead of the game. Um, I have uh, several giving events this fall and none of them have really announced their prizes yet. So that speaks very highly of Mora that the prizes are already announced and put on the site because I've been chasing other people down for them, but Mora's already on the ball and has them already listed. Um, Okay, so a couple more questions because I know we're running up against our time. Um, this one is a, a good question, so thank you for asking this. Um, there was an email from Mighty Cause about paying the transaction fee for donations. Um, I just wanna clarify, and I apologize if you got that email and it was confusing, that is for our own Giving Tuesday event. And this is a little bit confusing every year because Richland Give does, gives us on Giving Tuesday. It's We're holding two events. Mighty Cause has a platform-wide um, giving event called Give for Giving Tuesday with its own leaderboard. And Richland Gives, of course, is operating at the same time. And that's a local event on Giving Tuesday. So the offer of paying transaction fees is for um, giving Tuesday on our platform and it's unfortunately you can't participate in two giving events on the same day um, because we can really only opt you into one at a time. Um, that said, um, donors do have the option of covering fees for you on Mighty Cause and we found um, pretty good success at, I think last year, I don't know what the exact percentage was, but a lot of donors did opt to cover fees for you so that you didn't have to pay those and you saw more of the donation, but we do have a, a giving, uh, Richland Gives kind of has its own pricing structure. So I apologize and I'll make sure that you don't receive any more confusing Giving Tuesday um, emails in the future. I think in the FAQ, you can see the pricing uh, structure for Richland Gives. And it's just, it, it's important to note that Giving Tuesday on Mighty Cause is separate from Richland Gives, even though both events take place on the global giving day of Giving Tuesday. Um, so I don't know if that makes sense, but November 27th is a global event where nonprofits uh, try to solicit donations after Cyber Monday. Um, we have our own giving event for that on Mighty Cause. Richland Gives is separate from that, even though they're both happening at the same time, um, but they both have their own pricing structure. Um, and there's one, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. Um, I, yeah, I send out emails about Richland Gives to our list of nonprofits in Richland County. I understand Mighty Cause also sends them emails about other things that Mighty Cause is doing. Is it possible to get the, the Richland County nonprofits off of your email list for the Giving Tuesday things, or is that not possible? 
Yeah, absolutely. I'll make sure that we uh, filter out Richland Gives so that you guys don't get any more emails that don't apply to you. Um, I wouldn't recommend unsubscribing totally just in case, for instance, there's a big platform announcement that does affect Richland Gives um, admins, um, but we can make sure that um, participants in this year's event are um, basically excluded from receiving those emails. So we'll make sure to do that so that there's no more confusion about that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I apologize for that. Um, we have one more question. Um, what is, uh, is there a list or some um, sort of way that a nonprofit that needs a little bit of extra help with their campaign can receive that? Um, so Maura, do you guys have any like lists of nonprofits that maybe need some extra some help from that professionals organization or professionals group you were talking about? Uh, yes, if you need help, um, just email me. As I indicated earlier, we have four volunteers so far. Uh, if I get additional volunteers, of course, I'm trying to match them up with the nonprofits who have indicated they need help. Um, so just let me know if you need help, and I will try to get it for you. Um, and if that, that's about it. I'm, I'm trying to find more volunteers. Sure, and if you just need some general help getting set up on the platform, I am also happy to assist you. Um, I can't, you know, go in and, and build your page for you, and I can't do I can't do everything to the extent this other group is doing. But I'm happy to provide guidance and advice and to help you um, get your page set up. And if you need help with campaign strategy, I'm also help, happy to help with that. Even though I can't, of course, be hands on and in doing things for you, I can certainly provide guidance and best practices for you. So you can always email me at Linda at MightyCause.com for that as well. Um, and there's one, oh, one last question. I know we're at 301, um, so thanks to you, those of you who stuck with us. Um, the link path, to, link path to the Richland Gives nonprofit toolkit, I believe that's under resources. So if you go to richlandgives.com or .org, click on resource, or hover over resources, and it's just in a drop-down menu there. All right, so that was a lot of questions. You guys are um, awesome and asked really great, thoughtful questions. Um, I'll go ahead and end this here since I know we're already over our time, but I'll make sure that the recording is posted on the Richland Gives site, and I'll also make sure that Maura has the slides in case she wants to, in case you want to get those from her as well. Um, so Maura, thank you so much for coming along today and helping me out and helping me answer these questions. Um, and thanks to everybody who registered. Um, happy fundraising. I'm ex so excited for Richland Gives. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.